Hello everyone. I'm Hanbo. I'm from Group Six. My group member are Hai Wen, Yu Hao. The topic we will bring you guys today is RDMA on NetFPGA. We made a short animation to demonstrate the simple idea of RDMA. For example, I try to mail some packets from US to China. So usually there are two options for me. The first one is regular shipping. As its name indicates, it usually takes very long time for delivery to the final destination because it needs to go through several processes, so it, it, it makes the time longer. And the option two is called express shipping. It will de directly deliver the package to the final destination without any stops. So the RDMA idea is more like the express shipping. It's faster and it's, direct, it's more direct. So what is RDMA? It stands for Remote Direct Memory Access. So it's more like we can, we can deliver the data directly into the application memory space. So why RDMA matters? The key benefits RDMA could bring us is lower, uh, lower latency and lower CPU utilization. So we think for lower latency, it will benefit those companies who are doing the high frequency trading. Because the company with RDMA could get the information earlier than the one without. So it can start trading earlier than other companies. So time is money. For lower CPU utilization, we think it will benefit the company who needs to use the commercial server. Because the one with the RDMA only needs fewer server to achieve the same amount of throughput. So we think it's less is more. So let's welcome Yu Hao to introduce more details about RDMA in industry. Hi, my name is Yu Hao Lu. I'd like to introduce to you about our RDMA software experiment. There are three commonly held RDMA technologies on the market, which are InfiniBand, Rocky, and iWorld. In our project, we choose to use SoftWorld and software iWorld kernel driver to test the feasibility and performance of RDMA implementation on our network. Before going to the details of our test results, let's first take a look at the difference of handling network packets between an RDMA-compatible endnode and a conventional network endnode. Traditional computers use TCP IP protocol to communicate with each other. When it receives packets from the network, the network interface card, also known as NIC, first buffers the incoming packets in the kernel buffer, and the NIC will request service from host CPU via interrupt. Then, the CPU copies the NIC buffer region into the system memory region. This copying process usually takes a large number of CPU cycles. On the other hand, RDMA-compatible computers have a special compu network interface card. The host CPU running RDMA program will first tell the network interface card which kinds of packets should go to the pre-assigned application memory. Later, the NIC will store the packet data directly into the application memory. By eliminating the copy process and the content switch between kernel memory space and application memory space, the RDMA endnote can support the application that requires very low latency and very high throughput. Here is the setup of our software experiment. We installed SoftWorld on both ends and trying to send RDMA package from the client CPU to the server CPU. Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about how we implement RDMA in hardware. This is the overview of our system. We, we replaced the original NIC on the server side with NetFPGA. Also, we use iPerf as the packet generator on the client side. This is how we designed RDMA package format. RDMA header include the request type and the cache address. 
Request type will specify the function of this payload, read or write. Cache address will specify the address in the application cache. When a request comes in, FIFO control unit will determine the kind of function it is by looking at the RDMA header. When it's a write request, a FIFO control unit will send the package to the core one. When core get into the core one, this FIFO will buffer the packet. Then store the payload to the application cache. Read is similar to write. When the packet come in, FIFO control unit will send the package to the second core. When get into the core 2, the package has the already specify which part of application cache is needed to read from. So the package with the payload will buffer into the FIFO, then send out to the client. This is a how we implement RDMA. And the, this is the result of our hardware. As you can see, the upper right terminal send a package with a, spe a spe special header and data. The lower right terminal shows the uh, uh, TCP dump result, and the lower left show the data in the application map. We can see the application map has the same data with the original package data. This is our project schedule. Up to today, we finished the software and the hardware. Thank you. All right, let's switch topic to see a brief demonstration of our software experiment. For the software test, we first install the SoftiWorb RDMA driver. Later, we will do more tests on the RDMA connectivity and write operation bandwidth. From the screen, you can see I have already loaded the RDMA device driver. And then I need to verify the simulated SoftiWorb Ethernet port already loaded. SIW stands for SoftiWorb. Here are two Ethernet ports. We do the same thing on node B. Next, I'm going to use two computers as server and client to test the connectivity between two nodes. I use ifconfig to find the IP address of server and client. The program we use is called RPIN. Here is the main page of the RPIN. This program is used as a RDMA ping pong test benchmark. I choose Node B as a server and use TCP dump to listen on the package sent from Node A. The upper right is going to send the RDMA pin package and the lower right is receiving package. We can see the receiving package data matches with the data we send 
from node A. Plus, we try to use a perf test tool to measure the bandwidth of RDMA write operation. This time, node A is a server and node B is a client. Node B is going to send packets to node A. This experiment failed and the console print out some error messages. We we'll start searching for solutions for this error. Now let's take a look at a hardware experiment result of a simplified RDMA write operation implemented on NetIPGA. The network consists of three nodes. At the bottom left is the NetIPGA control node, which represents a server node with an RDMA NIC. On the right side, N0 and N1 both represent client nodes, which are trying to write data directly into the server's memory. First, we write a script to set up the port mapping and download the assembly code onto the FPGA. Then I send some pin packets from N0 to N1. As you can see, the packets actually went through the control node and arrive at its destination. But after checking the first 10 data entries inside the DMAP, we know that the data was not saved into the server's memory. This is because the ping command only sent out random data which do not match the RDMA write packet format. Second, I'm going to send a special packet using iperf. From the seventh position, the first character marks as the write operation, and the next eight character represent the data is writing to address zero. And after that, we have the payload. From N1, we found the characters sent into the network after they were transformed into the hex number. Again, we will check the first 10 entries of the server set D mine. This time, we found the data were actually stored into the memory. Third, we are going to change the destination field of the packet and see if the data packet can be saved into another location in the service memory. Ask 2. 
uh, B character in hex number is 98. So the packet data will be saved into the memory address start from 98. And we also change the payload to FF123456. So the starting address uh, of 98 should be found in the daemon. As we found, the, the payload matches with the sending packet. We also consider about how to read the data from the daemon of the server and send it back to the client. Because the user data pass will add some poor number information into its packet header, we thought if we can modify the header's content and swap the source and destination port, Probably we will be able to read data from the DMAM in the future. Thank you.